we should talk briefly before we end about the Labour Party. It's odd that we haven't talked about them so much because they are the presumptive victors of this election, but then they've been incredibly boring going out of their way to pursue this sort of Ming Vars strategy. You've got Rachel Reeves going out there and saying hilarious Orwellian things like stability is change and thinking that will do anything other than send people to sleep at a particular speeches. But um, Rakib, you mentioned Diane Abbott there. That's essentially the, the alleged purge of the Corbynite left has more or less been the story where Labour is concerned of the week. Diane Abbott became a particular focus for this because of the fact that um, she has a lot of sort of sentimental value to the left in she particular, does. as in terms of her record as the, the first female black MP. Um, also, I think it's fair to say was treated in a, in a pretty grubby or not particularly transparent fashion by the party. But hasn't there been a lack of appreciation of um, why she was suspended to begin with, that she wrote a letter to the Observer which said that Jewish people... Yeah. Gypsies might and travellers as well. Exactly. Might have, ex might have experienced prejudice, mm. but they didn't experience racism. I thought it was also interesting that she referenced things like Jim Crow. So she was already in the realm of the mid-20th century, but seemed to forget about one particular thing that happened in Europe during that time. So as it stands, it seems like she's got the whip back. It's not clear whether or not she'll actually be allowed to stand. But what have you made of the whole Diane Abbott row this week? Well, I think it ties in with the row surrounding Pfizer Shaheen mm -hmm. um, as well, actually. The, the, it's almost the fact that, oh, the women of colour, they must be protected. If they express outrageous views, we should be more forgiving. Absolutely not. That people has been the be, undertone to that. That has been the undertone yeah. to that. And people, I think we need to have a restoration of personal responsibility and accountability Absolutely. more than anything. I understand the sentimental how you say the sentimental contribution surrounding Diane Abbott, the fact that she broke those glass ceilings. And and I think that's actually a shame that she broke those glass ceilings, but actually her contributions to British politics at times have been quite toxic. And, and, and that's the truth of it. And I think much of this rhetoric that uh, the way the Labour Party have handled, and I don't think that it's been handled in a particularly mm. good way, um, if truth be told, uh, that, that this will mean that black voters will abandon Labour en masse. Uh, someone will have to explain to me how this, this which is, mm. how this entire episode is going to put off West African voters in places like Swindon and Thurrock mm. in Essex. How is that going to put them off the Labour Party? As if they've all got a kind of picture of Diane uh, Abbott over the mantelpiece. I, I, or something. I think what it is, crazy. if you look at our racial discourse, it's very much looking at it through the prism of this, almost this London-centric Caribbean origin grievance. And it completely ignores the fact that actually, if you look at the black British population, only 26% of Caribbean origin, actually the, predomin the predominantly of African origin, very traditional minded as well. And I think I tell people that only one in four black British people are actually Caribbean origin, they're actually very surprised. Because I think the founding touch points when it comes to the black British community, which is clearly very diverse, it'll be things such as Windrush, Notting Hill Carnival, Diane Abbott being... Um, there's a very experienced politician. And I think that we need to understand how modern Britain's actually changed in, in that sense. Can I just, just build on that? Mm -hmm. I just want to push back against this idea that the Labour Party is now a moderate, responsible, acceptable opposition party ready for government. Because actually, I take a very different view. If you look at the Diane Abbott, uh, Pfizer Shaheen scandals, if you look at Angela Rayner, you know, going to a meeting of predominantly Muslim men wearing a long dress and falling over herself to meet every grievance. If you look at how Labour have said they're going to overturn the Illegal Migration Act and get rid of Rwanda. If you look at how they've said they're pretty comfortable with mass legal migration. If you look at if you look at what they've said with the racial um, uh, the equal uh, race, equality, race, equality, race yeah. equality act, whereby they're going to distribute government contracts on the basis of race and uh, race and ethnicity. If you've looked at what they've said on gender self identification, they're going to allow kids to change their gender with with minimal supervision or guidance. Um, I'm sorry, this is actually not a moderate, responsible party. What this is is a Labour Party leaning in to the worst parts of identitarian. Uh, you know, mass Ideology. migration politics that we've got in this country. And I just do not look at Keir Starmer and Labour and see a moderate, responsible Blairite party that's got itself together. I see the opposite. I actually see a party leaning into sectarianism, uh, leaning into identity politics, leaning into mass migration and cultural decline. I don't see a moderate, responsible party. And the Diane Abbott thing is actually outrageous because the double standards that are applied here uh, you know, she has consistently been given a free pass on things she said about white people, about Jews, about minority groups, that were I to say that as a 
straight white guy uh, who also happens to be conservative on some issues. I mean, there's no way in this world I would be coming back into politics. I certainly wouldn't be getting the whip back. And I'm just getting tired of the double standards on the identitarian left. I think Labour are not moderate. I don't think they're responsible. I think they're much more radical uh, than we currently uh, appreciate. And I think if they have a big majority, uh, they are going to be doing some sweeping radical changes in this country that are going to make a lot of people feel very nervous.